All right, so those were a couple clips from the FX30 that I had the opportunity recently to rent out, take down to the beach, get some shots with, play around with, color grade footage, all the above. And honestly, I don't even know what this video really is. It's not really a review, but it kinda is, and it's kinda like just an experiment video. I'm experimenting with different camera, different system, different menus, just to see if I like it or not, or if I think it's a good camera. I also felt like I needed to jump back in here and say I primarily shoot music videos and like YouTube videos and vlogs and photography, so that's kinda what I'm basing my thoughts on when I talk about this camera. First of all, if you know anything about the FX30, then you probably know all the specs. You know it's a crop sensor, you know it's $1,800, it's one of the cheaper Sony cameras. The base ISO is 800 and 200 or 2500, which is really low compared to like the FX3 and like other A7S3, Sony models, whatever. If you don't know all the specs, click the link down below and go read all the specs. I'm not about to read off all the specs for the camera. You should probably already know this if you're clicking on this video and you're interested in knowing more about the camera. This video is really just about my experience with it and if I liked it or if I didn't like it or what I did or didn't like about it and um, yeah let's get into that first of all I don't really like crop sensor cameras but I just wanted to test it out since it's $1,800 it's the affordable ver version of like this new Sony's and the top-notch little Sony camera but it's APS-C crop sensor which means whatever lens you put on it is multiplied times one and a half 1.5 which I don't really like that much but if that's all the money you got to get, or if that was all the money I had to get a camera, I just have to deal with it. I prefer full frame like this, or the case of Sony, it would be the FX3. I would probably pick the FX3 over the FX30 all day. One, because it's full frame. Two, the base ISO on the FX3 is 12,800 compared to on the FX30, 2,500. You're getting way more low light quality with the FX3. So I personally, unless I only had that amount of money to get that camera, wouldn't get that camera and I would just go save my money up and go for the FX3. I like a shallow depth of field and a nice creamy blurry background and with full frame you're gonna get more of that as opposed to crop sensor. The FX30 didn't give as much, but it did with the lower aperture lenses. It still looked good. The quality of the FX30 was really nice. I thought it looked good. There were some cases where the colors were kind of off when the light, well, when lighting wasn't controllable. And then in controlled lighting scenarios, I thought that the lighting or the colors looked um, much better and I could get them to a place that I like them. Color grading on a new system is always gonna be weird because you're not used to the colors and just everything about it. So my experience color grading on this camera was a little different. At times I didn't like it, at times I did like it. But ironically, uh, the sponsor of this video is a color grading tool and it's called Cinema Grade. If you have a hard time color grading or you just can't get your images to the place that you like or you want them to be, this plugin might be beneficial for you. Cinema Grade is a newer color grading software that in my opinion is gonna help you get the look you desire faster. It lets you point and click directly in your viewer over shadows, midtones, and the highlights to drag them darker or brighter for an easy and quick proper exposure. You can also point and click over colors to change the hues, change the saturation, and change the luma. The software includes video scopes too so you can make sure you're not crushing your blacks or blowing your highlights. Plus the false color feature shows you exactly what is blown out or crushed to easily get an evenly balanced cinematic looking image. If you're struggling to get the look you want, CinemaGrade is going to make it simpler to understand and easier to achieve. They also have some built-in LUTs that you can play with on your footage but I do recommend you learning and practicing coloring daily to get better and understand color grading ultimately. You can also import your own LUTs or other creators LUTs as a base grade on your footage if you want and you can make tweaks from there using the point and click method as well. This software is available for Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve so I do recommend checking it out using my link below for 20% off if you're looking for an easier color grading experience. I did color grade the whole intro to this video using the Cinema Grade software where the only thing I did add was colors into the shadows and the highlights, which Cinema Grade doesn't currently offer yet. I added this on a basic color wheels over top of my Cinema Grade look. So if you did like the look of that intro, check out Cinema Grade today. All right, 
back to the Sony FX30. So there's a link down below where you can check out that plugin and make your color grading experience maybe a little bit easier. It just simplifies things. So like I said, the color grading experience on the FX30 was iffy, it was up and down. It's like sometimes it looked good to me, sometimes it didn't. And um, you know, there was a lot of noise and grain in the footage and kind of split tones or split colors, kind of artifacts in the footage. And I was just, I don't know, I just didn't really like that that much. That kind of leads me into the low light. The low light, I tried to shoot at the native ISO uh, or at the base ISO 2500 and I seen it felt like it was just a lot of noise always and I had to denoise the footage to get it to a place that I want you probably can't even notice here on YouTube because of the compression but it was very noisy before denoising it but overall I feel like I with my experience and my skill, I could get it to a place where I did like it, but I felt like I had to put a lot of effort and work into it. And that's just not something I want. I don't want a hard, long, drawn out process. I wanna be able to make things as easy as possible. And uh, I feel like with Canon, I can do that. Now, like I said, it could be just because this is the FX30, it has a much lower base ISO than like the FX3 and the full frame sensor. That probably is way better in low light. And like I said, I would just save up my coins and get the FX3 instead of even trying to get the FX30 and invest in money into lenses and denoisers and all these things. I would just save my money and go for the big bait. And then I could just rent out the FX3 or FX30 or whatever until I have enough money to buy that FX3. So if you know the specs or if you went and read the specs, like I said earlier, you know that this camera is pretty good, man. It's got the 4K, it's got, you know, 10 bit, it's got high quality. And even the images coming out uh, as far as taking raw photos were really good to me as well. I took a couple photos and I actually enjoyed the experience of taking photos on this camera more than I did shooting videos, which is probably gonna be weird to some people because this is primarily, I think, a video camera and not a photo camera. The images came out really sharp and crispy. If you need to take photos on a camera and you're deciding to get this or you're planning on getting this FX30, I think it does both pretty well. Uh, overall. As far as the usability and the in-hand experience, I do not like the way it feels in my hand. I cannot stand that grip and I, I don't want to be like shooting it down because some people do like it and they think it's good, but I think like holding my Canon cameras like an EOS R or EOS R5 just feels so much better in hand when using the camera and I think that plays a big role when you decide what camera you're going to take out with you during the day if you're going to vlog or if you're just trying to take some pictures or if you're going to lunch with some friends and you want to bring your camera. I probably wouldn't want to bring the FX30 with me just because the way it feels. When I had it down at the beach, I didn't even want to bring it out with me. I was like kind of mad that I brought it with me uh, to Dave and Buster's. I wanted to... <laughs> not have it. I wish I had a bag to put it in or I didn't even bring it at all. But I knew that I rented it out specifically to make a video so I had to do it. But something like my Canon R5 or R, I bring that all day just because it feels good in the hand and yeah, that, that that's how I feel about it. <laughs> the menu systems way more complex than something like Canon and that was just that just threw me off. It was a lot of different settings. There's a lot of different colors and gammas and formats and Kodaks and it's just too much like with my Canon you just cut log on cut it off when you go into picture mode It's in you know a standard or neutral picture profile You don't have to switch from log because Canon photos don't come out in log like Sony's do It's just really complex in the menu systems, and that's just not what I want. I'm not a fan of that I want the easiest option possible because yeah, why not and like the overall outcome whether it's 4k video or Photos I think between Canon and Sony they're both equally really really good outcomes I think that it's all about um, your personal experience and it's subjective like if you like holding this camera or that camera or if you feel like this one's easier to use than that one I think that's what it's all about because at the end of the day Canon and Sony both give you a great looking image um, overall or in the at the end of the process so that's how I feel about the FX 30 would I get it probably not I don't think that the outcome of the image is that much different than uh, the Canon, which is an easier system in my opinion. So I'd probably go Canon before I would get the Sony FX30. But if you like Sony and you're looking into this, like I said, check it out, do your thing. I would recommend renting the camera first before you make any final decisions so you can test it out the same way that I did. And if you wanna rent your camera out, you can get a 10% discount using my code and using Aperture Rent, the link down below. So use that down below, rent you out the camera and see if you like it. Instead of listening to you know all these different YouTubers tell you what you need to buy and what's the best and what's not the best and what's bad and what's good, you could just see for yourself. And I think that is what is probably the most important because we all color different, some soft, some want it sharp, 
Some want film, some want dark and moody, contrasty, some want the, you know, shadows lifted. Everything is different and very, very, very subjective. So I think it's important for you to try the camera out. So do so, man. Click the link down below and uh, rent out the FX30 and see for yourself. All right, that's it. I shot some vlog stuff, so I might put out a vlog from the FX30. If you wanna see the vlog, uh, let me know down in the comments as well. But that's wrapping this video up for the FX30. Appreciate you hanging with me and um, listening to me talk about what I like and what I don't like. All right, slap the like button if you got something out of this, if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, whatever. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, until next time.